So, you know, I, I thought it was an excellent book and that, hence why I rated it such. Even my, my feedback on that, the one point on the qualities of a male and female that were desirable, um, when it got to things like, oh, I believe in the female section, there was like a section that said on like skin color, for example, that she should be fair and um, stuff. I was like, I, the reason that I wrote that I couldn't understand certain things was like, I didn't, un I, I, I didn't understand the place of that in the book. When I know, for example, like I know the Islamic tradition, the fiqh traditions and all of these, these are human endeavors. So naturally that sometimes you will come, you'll get biases in the fiqh books. Um, I, I've read it before, like, you know, against black people or against Chinese people or against white people. So there's certain conceptions and, you know, um, things that happen there. But like the obsession with fair skin was one of the things I was like, okay, maybe that problem, like, I, I don't know if I wasn't looking at it from, maybe you have a different perspective on this, but I was looking at it from, okay, is that necessary in the book? Maybe not. Um, similarly with like, you know, describing the ideal man or ideal woman, like what's his girth supposed to be? How big should his member be? And what should her, the shape of a woman's thighs be? And I truly believe that, you know, and maybe this is a modern interpretation on things and hence why I'm seeing it differently, is that, you know, beauty is in the eye of, be eye of the beholder in the sense that I've met guys who love big girls and I le I've met guys that love slim girls and I've met guys that like tall girls and I I've met guys that like short girls. So, like for me, it was like, I, I mean, to an extent, I get why you put it in the book uh, to show that this is what scholars used to say in the day. But at the same time, I was like, is it relevant? Maybe not. But that's why I also included a point saying this is a minor thing. Like it's not, I didn't get upset at it when I read it, if that's what you were wondering. No, but I think I loved with that. I loved it. And, and I love the criticism, um, constructive criticism. And because a number of people have voiced a similar sentiment, but I liked the way you explained it, and I, now it's going to be uh, a chance for me to kind of explain my my. Um, sure. There was a method. There was maybe a method to the madness. <laughs> now, and, I, and, I, and because you've actually read the book, because and this is one of the, the challenges that I've had is that because not many people have read the book, like cover to cover, they've seen or heard about it, or a couple of sections, or maybe they've read something. It took it put them off, and they closed it again. So it, it's very difficult for me to have a conversation with someone. That hasn't unless they've actually read the book or they're willing to kind of engage and, and, and talk to me but that being said i know it, it, it's a quite a difficult read because there's a lot of information i mean it took me 10 years to put together um but again for someone like you've actually read it and then i'll engage in, and hopefully try to explain my my thought process so with the um the the section on like the male qualities um, the, the the qualities of the like, the ideal male or not the ideal male so to speak the quality that's desirable in men that women generally look for and the quality that's detestable in men that women generally aren't attracted to and then likewise um, the other way around that was something that was because I was following the the you could say the approach of a number of the early scholars like even Falita he did something similar so that's why even in my book I said that the approach I'm following is similar to the Eastern love text like the Kama Sutra and the Afro Arab um, love text from Alice Yulti and Jahid and others because they did a similar so I was kind of I'm trying uh, to follow okay. similarly what they were doing now the reason why unintentionally and I'm glad you picked that up I showed contradictory like so some scholars were obsessed like you said about fairness about white women being the most desirable things like that but then also you had other scholars like uh, Jahid who counteracted that and was talking about the beauties of black women and the beauties of the, uh, brown skinned women and Alice Yuti as well, who wrote a book speaking about the beauties of brown and black women. Now, if someone just read that, they'll be thinking, why is a 15th century scholar from Egypt of Persian descent speaking about the beauties of brown and black women? And it was because in his time, a lot of the scholars and writers and poets were obsessed with like fair skinned women, white women. So he wanted to counteract that and talk about to raise the self esteem of brown and black women. And the reason why that's important, obviously, me, that's a black person. Obviously, I'm attracted to black women. Reading stories or um, passages from great scholars speaking disparagingly about black women, I don't want people... I look, Like you said, it's a human... That's your perspective. It's not going to affect me. But there's some people that if they read a scholar says such and such, they will think that's what Islam says. Like, Islam mm -hmm. values white women over 
um, black women or brown skin women when that's not the case. And by me, intent I intentionally wanted to show, yeah, some scholars were eulogizing white women and some scholars were eulogizing brown skin women and black women the same way they spoke about which women do they prefer in the bedroom. It's, it's an opinion. And like you said, beauty is in eye of the beholder. Whereas if I were to ignore that, I think I'll be doing a disservice to, to the tradition because that was something that we spoke a lot about. Like there was like an obsession with like, um, and we like to kind of blame the West or Europeans or colonization for that when the issue of colorism was a problem in the Muslim community before interaction with, with the Western world. Fair. And that's how I kind of, I did kind of touch on, I think it was on chapter three on like the color of beauty section, the where there was an obsession, like I said, with fair skinness and, and that's something that is a part of a, a, a topic of my other book. So I'm glad you, you um, mentioned that because like I said, a number of people have, one person actually did say, and it was a black woman, she said that she thought I was, um, what did she say? Something along the lines of, I was promoting that white women are more desirable than black women because I, I I quoted scholars talking about how they preferred white women. But then straight after that, I mentioned how I remember scholar, that, yeah. of black women. So it's, again, I think some people, and that's why even in writing a book, it's probably easier for me to write a book than explain sometimes because although sometimes people can misconstrue with something that you've written, but then I can always go back and explain the rationale and, and things. But that was a con consciously put in. Fair. Some people understood it, some people didn't understand it. And again, it's to show that, like you mentioned when you spoke about like oral sex and scholars, these are different. There's things that is clear from the Quran, from the Hadith, and there's a lot of other things which are interpretations. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the context. 